Welcome to this course about Theme Builder. This course was designed to help you get started using Theme Builder for customizing your Telerik and Kendo UI components for your applications. My name is Alex Iskind, and over the past few years, I've been dedicated to training developers in modern web technologies, and I'll be guiding you on this journey today. In this course, we'll look at Theme Builder's capabilities and how to use it within the context of a new or an existing Telerik UI application. We'll be diving into Theme Builder, integrating its robust theming capabilities in a modern web application, utilizing the latest features. We'll kick things off with the basics, learning about Theme Builder dashboard, creating projects, and the tool's user interface. Then we'll go a little bit deeper with the advanced edit tab, component editing, and variables. And we'll also see how to use Theme Builder with Figma, a popular design tool. By the end of this course, you'll be fluent in navigating the Theme Builder platform, customizing themes, and applying them to breathe new life into your web applications. So let's begin your transformation into a UI theming expert with Theme Builder. So what is Theme Builder? You can think of it as a styling wizard for Telerik UI and Kendo UI components. If you're a seasoned developer and you want to get something that looks good together quickly, Theme Builder will let you do that visually. If you're a design enthusiast or professional, you'll be able to dig deeper and have advanced styling capabilities as well. In either case, there's no need to dig through lines of CSS. Theme Builder's visual interface makes styling components almost as easy as drag and drop. Theme Builder is feature rich, offering everything from high impact styling to atomic design elements. We'll go through all this in the course. You can adjust colors, set topography, and finesse borders until your UI components match your brand's style. Here's an example of a default UI. Functional, but generic. Now watch as we apply a custom theme we've created with Theme Builder. The transformation is instant, and the interface now reflects a unique and engaging brand identity. Theme Builder is not just another design tool. It's a software as a service, or SaaS product. This means that everything happens in the cloud. There's no need to worry about installation or setup. With just your Telerik account, you're ready to start styling. There are several tiers available, depending on your needs, and a tier that's already included with your Telerik account. In essence, Theme Builder streamlines UI theming, and it simplifies UI design for both developers and designers. In this lesson, let's take a look at some of the tools and web pages that will help you along the way while you are learning about Theme Builder. First up, we have the official Theme Builder documentation. It's your go-to source for understanding Theme Builder's capabilities, from creating visual styles to applying them to your projects. Check out the docs right here to start exploring. A link will be provided in the description down below. If you've hit a snag or just want to go deeper, the Teller community and support resources are there to assist you. You can usually find help sections directly within the tool or through the main Theme Builder homepage. Armed with these resources, you're well on your way to becoming a Theme Builder expert. Dive in, experiment, and don't hesitate to utilize the wealth of information at your fingertips. In this chapter, we set the foundation for your theming journey. We begin by introducing the Theme Builder dashboard, where you can initiate new projects and manage existing ones. We dive into creating a new project with a modern Fluent theme, showcasing its support for CSS variables. This chapter also walks you through the theme style pane, demonstrating how to select color swatches and apply advanced styling strategies to UI components. By the end of this chapter, you'll be familiar with the Theme Builder environment and ready to take the next step at crafting your custom themes. Welcome to the Getting Started chapter. If you're not logged in already, go to the Telerik website under All Products. You can find Theme Builder here in the menu. If you don't have an account yet, go ahead and create one. You can click on this Try Now button. If you do have an account, you can log in here. You can launch Theme Builder by clicking on this Open Theme Builder button, and you'll land on your project dashboard. Now here, if you already have some projects, they'll be listed on the bottom panel, and you'll be able to create a brand new project by clicking this New Project button. I'm going to call my project RPS, and the first choice you come to is the Project Icons. Your theme can use either SVG icons or font icons for your base theme. SVG icons are the newer way to go, while font icons are still supported. And right below that, you'll be able to choose a base theme. If you're familiar with Telerik UI, for example, let's go to UI for Blazor. We can go to the demo site. And let's take a look at Scheduler. You'll be able to see the themes right on the demos page. And you can change the themes up here with this pull down menu. These are the base themes. So there's a default theme, which looks kind of like this. There's Bootstrap, Material, and Fluent theme. This is what it means to have a base theme, a starting point. We're going to go with Fluent here and click Create. The Fluent theme is fully customizable theme that embraces Microsoft's Fluent UI look and feel. 
and with CSS variables, we gain that superpower of dynamic customizations, which I'll show you in a bit. Theme Builder has now set up our workspace. On this screen, you have everything you need at your fingertips. Your project controls are up here, where you can rename your project, share it, export, import, and delete your project. And you also have the Telerik Kendo theme version, which is something you want to keep in mind when upgrading later. You also have settings for your project right here. Asset management, variables are down here. And you can also change your mind if you want to use font icons later on. You can also share your project from here, and we'll get into that later. And finally, in the toolbar, you have the export button. This is where you export your theme. And you can also go home here on this button. And you'll see that back on the home page now we have two projects. They're both called RPS, but this one is R3. And this one is R2 theme V6.4. We're working on this current one right here. On the left side, you'll find the theme styles. On the right side, you'll find the live preview page, which has all your Telerik UI components shown in a live preview. So if you change anything here, it'll be updated on the right. And there's also the advanced edit, which we'll get into a little bit later. And with that, we've taken a first step in the realm of theme customization. Let's take a look at our workspace. And the first thing you'll notice on the left is theme styles. And there's a button here that's disabled. Well, we've selected the fluent theme. And I'm going to show you what happens if you don't select a fluid theme. For example, this other project I have was based on the default theme, which is laid out a little bit differently. So the user interface does change and the options do change based on what you select. And theme styles now has a little drop down that's active and you'll be able to select a swatch. So these are all default themes, but they have a different color combination to begin with. Here's the default main. If you select that, your starting point for the project will be that classic orange color for your primary elements. Or you can go to default blue, for example, and make your starting point this teal color. That's fine, but we're working with a fluent theme, which does not have that option. And unlike the Kendo default bootstrap or material themes, the fluent theme uses CSS variables to enable customization. Let's go down to palettes here, and you'll notice this primary palette is set to this variable, Kendo primary 100. If you click on that, you'll get a list of variables that you can edit. These are CSS variables, and let's say you want a different palette color to begin with. You can select that and change that color. You can select the base color here, and all the other colors in this set get updated accordingly. There's just different weights and different shades of that color. And as you can see, the live preview updates with all the components getting that primary color. I know this looks pretty terrible, so excuse me for that. Let me change this back to something more palatable. Um, now he's making silly jokes. Anyway, uh, you can also change the individual palette colors. So let's say you have a palette and you don't like one single shade of that. Well, you can change that one single color or I should say one single variable. We'll get into that a little bit later. And the magic happens on the right where the live preview always keeps you in sync and always lets you see the changes that you've made as you're making them. Now, for those of you who love to delve deeper, the advanced edit function unlocks even more customization possibilities. Here, you'll be able to manipulate the CSS variables to fine tune component styles to your exact specifications. There is still a live preview. It just moved down here for the single component that we've selected, which was a button. On the right side, you'll have component parts and properties for that component, which happens to be a button. And we'll get into more details on this a little bit later. For now, I want you to just try editing some things and playing around with this and just get familiar with using this interface. It could be a lot to look at, especially the first time you look at it. So the more familiar you are right now with it, before you continue on with the course, the better off you'll be following along with the rest of the course. Let's go back here to live preview. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. By default, this preview will show all the available components, which could be a lot. Let's say you wanted to focus on a couple of specific components that you're currently working on. There's a filter button up here, and you can just select which components you want to see. So for example, if I want to work on button and button group, I can select only those and then my live preview will only have those components. So experiment, explore, and transform your UI right here. In this chapter, we delve into essential functionalities that form the cornerstone of theme customization. We begin by mastering the use of variables, color, metrics, and topography to set the tone of our design. Next, we navigate to the Advanced Edit tab, unlocking intricate styling capabilities for our components. 
The chapter progresses by incorporating custom fonts and icons, enhancing the uniqueness of our themes. We finish off with exploring how to share projects with colleagues and control access within Theme Builder. This could be handy if you're working on a team, for example. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at one of the most important features you're going to learn. If you don't learn anything else in this course, you at least have to learn this, and that's variables. This is the heart of how you'll work with Theme Builder and the thing that gives you the most power. Let's start by going into our theme that we've created. I already have a filter set to show only the buttons, and I'm going to create a new metric here. If you expand the Kendo metrics group here, you'll notice that Kendo border radius medium is defined, and we can create our own variables up here by clicking on this plus button. You see it says add variable, click on that, and here you'll fill out some information about the variable. Now it says add metric. So this variable is metric related. We're gonna add or select a category. We currently don't have one, so we're going to create a new one. Let's call this RPS metrics because we're creating new metrics for our branded theme. If you just start typing a name, it'll automatically add the two dashes in the front. That's how variables should be defined, but you can also start with two dashes. I'm gonna call this one RPS border radius. And um, let's call it medium in case we have some other ones later. And give it a description, border radius to use with RPS theme components or whatever else you wanna use. And then the value. Now the value can actually inherit from another variable, but we wanna define our own. And I'm gonna use 0 0.5, but that's not gonna work because, well, this is a smart combo box that requires a unit. Now you can use pixels as your units, that's fine but I'm going to use REM units here. And as you can see, the Kendo border radius MD is also based on REM. You'll get to choose whatever units you wanna stick with for your own theme. I'm gonna use REMs and I'm gonna click create here. And there is our new group called RPS metrics with our new variable. If you create a new variable, you will have that RPS metrics group available. So you'll be able to add metrics variables to that same group. If you wanna change this variable, you can click on the ellipsis here, go to edit, updated to say 0.6, it automatically saves, or you can delete it. You can also copy its name, which is really handy if you have a long variable name. Typography is next. Look, I'm not promising this is gonna look pretty, but let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna create a new category called RPS Typographies. Let's add our variable name, RPS Default Typography. You can see that I'm kind of cheating here because I'm just basically copying what Kendo has, but you'll create your own names. Now, I wish this did have previews of these fonts to see what they actually look like, but there currently isn't, so we kind of have to wing it. No, I'm not going to select wingdings, but I will select Times New Roman to really have a stark difference. We're not going to actually use this, but I want you to see a difference between what we currently have and a font with serifs. Let's go with a font weight of 700 and a font size of 15. And you see here that the value is invalid, we do need to indicate some units like pixels, EMs, or REMs. Let's go with pixels here. Now here you can also select line height and letter spacing. This is really powerful stuff, and you do need to specify the line height, otherwise you'll get an error. And let's go with 20 pixels, and let's click Create. And there's our new typography. You do get a little preview right here, so you can see the difference there between the Kendo one and the RPS one. Now if you preview the existing Kendo typography, you'll see that the font is a little bit more complex. This specifies the entire CSS font according to CSS specs. You can select just one like we did, or you can select a whole list of different fonts and specifications like sans serif, and you can put it all in that line. And what would a theme be without setting our own custom colors? So we have a color section here. And just like before, I'm gonna create a new category give it a name, RPS primary, and select a really awesome primary color. Let's click create, and there's our new color. Well, great, we've created a couple of variables, but how do we use them? That's the important question. Well, we'll come back in the next lesson to look at the advanced edit tab. We're getting a little deeper here in our knowledge about Theme Builder, and we're gonna take a look at the advanced edit tab. Don't be so scared by that name. It's gonna be very handy to use that tab, and you're gonna be glad it's there. Here's our project. We've already created a couple of variables for metrics and for typography, and we're filtering our preview by button and button group. So we're gonna work on these. Go ahead and click on that advanced edit tab. You'll notice that our filtering still applies on this tab as well. And you can hover over each of these components 
you can click on one of them to select it, which will open up a sheet where you will see all the different states and all the different ways this button can be represented. So here's our button. You can see that it's got a, a normal state, it's got a hover state, active state, and here are the primary versions of the button. Also normal, hover, active, selected, and so on. Then we have other versions like flat, secondary, or flat and primary, outline. All these can be edited right here in advanced. Down at the bottom, we have a live preview. And you can switch what is previewed by selecting it. It's going to be outlined in red on the top panel here. So if you want to preview the solid primary button, you just click on that and you'll see it highlighted. Now, a button is actually made out of different component parts. So there's the button itself, and then there's the text inside. You can switch between which one is selected, and the properties underneath of that reflect the selected component part. So right now I have text selected, which is a span element. So all the properties below will affect the text span. If I select button again, all the properties below will apply to the button itself. Now, this might be a little bit overwhelming to look at. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So the recommended approach is to go top down, left to right. This ensures efficient editing and it also leverages CSS inheritance because changes in the parent component cascade down. That's how CSS works. A button is a pretty simple component, but there's going to be more complex components that you can edit. For example, let's take a look at button group. A button group has a lot more stuff going on. So here you'll definitely want to work from a simple button all the way up to the group. And on the right side, you'll see the component parts. You'll see that it has middle button selected and text. This is kind of similar to what a button looks like when you're editing it. But there's also a button group styling hint. These hints are valuable. Make sure you look at these. To set a style to all buttons in the button group component, use the top left button state. That's the one we have selected right here. If you want to apply styles only to the first or last buttons of the button group, you need to select them explicitly. That means that right now we have the leftmost button selected here, the top left button state, which is actually a middle button. And if we edit anything here, for example, if we go to background and add a color, let's say we wanted this uh, info color. Well, you'll see that all our buttons, the middle one, the first one, and the last one, all became blue because in a button group, the middle button is used as the parent for the first and last as well. So if you want to have customizations on the first button, which is this one, or the last button, which is this one, then you need to select those. And let's say we wanted to edit the background to a different color like this one. This is not good practice, by the way. I'm just giving you an example of the flow of cascades here. And then if you wanted to uh, change the last button as well, let's say you wanted to do yet a different color, then each one of those can be styled separately. Now that's how we added the middle first and last buttons in a button group. As you can imagine, this gets progressively more complex with more complex components. On the right side, you also have the button group itself. If you select that, it's a div and it's a group and you can actually set some properties on it as well. Now, if we go back here, if there's something you didn't like, you can undo it. I'm just going to undo all those changes for the buttons to get them back to where we started. Now, how do we apply those variables? Let's go back to button example. This is a lot simpler to look at. And I've selected the base button, the normal state one. And on the right, I've selected the button component part. And I'm going to use this RPS border radius metric. So under properties, there's sometimes a lot to look through. I'm going to type border in the search box and find border radius is here. Right now it's set to Kendo border radius MD, and you can actually add a value here like five pixels, for example, or you can select a variable. This is the recommended approach. The variable that we've created is RPS border radius, and it's available for us to select here. And there we go. Look at the preview now. It's got a much bigger border radius. And now if we go back to live preview, you'll see that all our buttons have a border radius, including the buttons inside that button group. If we edit the border radius and make it, let's say, one rem, you'll see that the button is even more rounded now. Let's go to advanced edit and select button again. We also edit RPS topography. So under button, we have the text section here, and we can select a text token to be RPS default topography. And under live preview, you'll see that our button now has that serif font times new Roman. In fact, 
all our buttons and button groups will now have that. This granular control allows us to tailor each component to our specific design needs. And that's a wrap for variables. In this lesson, we're gonna get creative with fonts. Let's learn how to upload and use custom fonts in Theme Builder. First thing, let's open our project and head to project settings over here. Here we can manage all things fonts under the fonts tab. Right now we don't have anything here. Click on upload font to get your first font in there. Now I went ahead and downloaded a Google font. This is not gonna be pretty, but it'll give you an example. Theme Builder supports TTF, OTF, EOT, WOFF, and WAF2 formats. I have the TTF format here for true type fonts. So there's a lot to choose from. Let's select one of these. I'm gonna go with caveat bold, and there it is. Let's select a font name. Caveat bold is fine, so I know what it is, what font type it is. This is not an icon font, this is a typeface. This is a bold font. So we're gonna give it a weight of 700. Font style, this is normal, and font display auto. Now the font name will appear in drop downs when you select fonts. You can rename it to, let's say, RPS, because that's our project, but I wanna keep the font name as is because, well, I wanna know what it is for later. The font type, I've selected typeface. This is a font type you'd use if you want a custom font family, which is what this is right now. There's also the icon option. If I was uploading an icon font, I would select this option. Make sure you click on this check button so that the font is actually saved. And it says font file uploaded successfully. Let's close this. Now, how do we actually use this? Well, remember that RPS variable we've created, RPS default typography? Well, now if you edit it under the font selection, our font should now be there. And yes, there it is, caveat bold. If we select that, now you get to see my beautiful creation at work here. Yes, this is a script type of font. So there you have it, a very stylized typography. Now, if you go back to edit your fonts here under asset management and you delete this, you'll get a message that says the caveat bold font is used as a variable and cannot be deleted. So you're gonna have to go and deselect that or remove that variable. But if you try to remove the variable, you'll get a message that it says the variable is used in component styles and cannot be deleted. So you're gonna have to go and select that button, remove that variable, then you'll be able to remove the variable and then you'll be able to remove the font. So this tool really helps you out, not shoot yourself in the foot. Collaboration is key in design and with Theme Builder, sharing your project is a breeze. Here we are back in our project and you can share either from this dropdown, click on share, or you can just click on the share button directly in the toolbar. Right now the members is just me, I'm an admin, which means I have full control over the project and its permissions. There's also the edit permission level and the view permission level. So for example, I'm gonna share it with, well, myself, but this is a different email address and I can select view, edit or admin. And let's select view here. I just want my teammate to be able to view and download the project, but not make any edits. I'm gonna click on share and then I get an email like this. It says, Alexander has shared the project with you, RPS, open and theme builder. I'm gonna click on that I'll log in if I have to. And here I am looking at the project that was shared with me. I have my own view so I can do the live preview and filter everything myself. And you'll also notice that anybody that's currently looking at the project, their avatar will be listed up here in the toolbar. Once they stop looking at the project, that'll disappear. Remember the emails that you're sharing with must be associated with a Telerik account. And these role assignments that you saw here can only be used with an enterprise license. If you want to manage your members, you can go back to the share screen, change their permission level, or remove them from the sharing capability. And that's how you bring your team together in Theme Builder. In this chapter, we'll bridge the gap between design and development by harnessing the power of Theme Builder's Figma plugin. We'll explore how to export and apply design tokens such as colors, topography, and icons directly from Figma into Theme Builder. Additionally, we'll see the practical application of these design elements within Theme Builder, culminating in the integration of custom fonts and icons into our UI, which sets the stage for a design that's both visually compelling and technically robust. Bringing design and development into a seamless workflow, we introduce the Figma integration with Theme Builder. With Theme Builder's Figma plugin, your design elements, the colors, topography, and effects can be directly exported as SAS or CSS tokens. Even custom SVG icons can be transformed into icon fonts all within the Theme Builder's ecosystem. Before we get going, make sure you have a Figma account and of course a Telerik account. 
Here I'm logged into my Figma account. You can click up here on resources and then plugins and then search for theme builder or progress theme builder. And here it is. Here you can get the documentation, the theme builder app, export styles, export font icons. The documentation link just takes you to the theme builder plugin for Figma overview on Telerik.com, a useful place for you to reference along with some tutorials. Now, let's say I had a Figma project open already here. For example, I have topography, colors, effects, and I also have an assets section with some components. Here's an example of a button. Another way you can get to the theme builder plugin from here, from your design is from the main menu and then plugins, progress theme builder. And then you can click on export styles. This window will pop up where you can log in with your browser. I'm already logged in, so I'll get a message that says I'm already logged in. <laughs> and if you're not, you'll have to log in here. Let's go back and you'll have to somehow differentiate the names of the projects. Now I have two projects that are named the same thing. Probably not a good idea. Let me rename this one to Legacy and back in Figma. Now I see RPS and RPS Legacy. We're going to work with RPS, which is the new one. And here we can export all these different styles. You can export everything or you can select what you want to export. For example, let's say I want to do just colors for now and I want to export all the colors that are in this design in Figma to Theme Builder, to my RPS project. Now, if you export to a project that already has previously exported styles, the plugin will list only the new or updated Figma styles. Let's click on export and it says design style successfully exported to RPS. Oh yeah? Well, let's go back and check. Here we are in Theme Builder in the RPS project. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see Figma colors. Oh yeah, these do look familiar. We've just exported these from Figma. That's pretty cool. So now all these variables are available for us to use in our theme. In the next lesson, we'll continue with exporting more tokens from Figma to Theme Builder. Let's dive more into the details of exporting your Figma designs, colors, and typography into Theme Builder. This step is crucial for maintaining design consistency. Here we have our design in Figma. It's rich with colors and typography examples crafted for our UI. We're gonna keep exporting here. This time we're going to export styles to RPS. And as you can see, colors is no longer available because, well, it already knows that we've exported colors. So all we have left to export is topography and effects. Let's go ahead and do all that. Go back to Theme Builder. And if you look under topographies, you'll see Figma topography right over here. You can also scroll down further under the effects section, and then you'll see Figma effects, things like drop shadows and so on. Now, keep in mind that for now, Theme Builder supports only color tokens with solid or linear gradient values. And also you can do this even with a trial license. You can export up to five styles per project and re-export them every time they change. Let's take this Figma primary color that we've exported and apply it to our button. Go ahead to the advanced edit mode and uh, let's select this primary button and change its background to the Figma color instead of the Kendo color. And there we go. Now my buttons all have that Figma primary color. And just like that, your UI components are one step closer to the Envision design. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the typography is if you imported custom fonts into Figma, you need to hold on to those files and pass them on to developers so they can import them into Theme Builder right over here because the plugin does not automatically transfer the fonts. So here we have Antonio font, it's missing. You're gonna to need to upload that font into Theme Builder separately. So now your designs are not just pictures, but a part of interactive styled UI. This is the magic of Figma and Theme Builder integration. Styles are not the only thing you can export from Figma to a theme builder. You can also export icons. These are more than just pretty graphics. They're the visual shorthand for your application. I recommend reading this document for the recommended structure for icon design in Figma that is going to be really compatible with theme builder. Here is an example of how to create a sample icon and some more examples. This is good for both designers and developers to take a look at. We'll provide this link under the video lesson. Now let's head over to Figma. And I do have some sample icons here in my Figma project. Here's one example of an icon under icons and action. And I have quite a few here that can all be exported. To begin the export, go to your Figma menu and then plugins, theme builder, export font icons. Select your project, 
Here you'll see all the different frames available in your current Figma project. Some of these have icons, others don't. You'll probably need to have a little bit of a familiarity with this project in order to select the frames that have icons that you want to export. You can select each frame individually or you can just select a group of them. In my case, I'll just put a check mark in icons and this should do the trick. Click on export 10 frames and all these will be updated in your RPS theme builder project. Here we are back in theme builder. And if you go to project settings, you can go to fonts and you'll see a new font that we didn't add ourselves, but was added for us by the theme builder plugin. And these are the design icon font one. And it's an icon font type instead of a typeface. We've got the weight, font style, font display is block for icons and the file type that's associated with those icons. If you want to make changes to the icons and re-export them, you have a couple of choices. For example, let's say we have this check outline here and we're actually going to modify it a little bit here. Now we want to export the icons again. We go to plugins, theme builder, export font icons, select the project that you've selected previously and you can re-export the icons again. I'm going to select this group right here just as an example. And now you'll see that you can either overwrite the existing set of icons that you've already had in there, or you can create a new one. I'm going to click create new. When we go to project settings and theme builder and go to fonts, you'll see now that we have two font icon groups here. In this chapter, we'll delve into wrapping up your theme. We'll showcase the final project result, emphasizing the major changes and specific theme builder features utilized. We finish off the chapter by looking at automatic migration, showing how to seamlessly update your project with new versions of components and themes with just a few clicks. In this lesson, I'm going to show you something pretty useful as a starting point for a Figma project. Now, a designer could provide a Figma project that's been created without having Telerik UI in mind, in which case you'd have to map all the different components and variables into Telerik UI components. But if you're working on a brand new project, there is a better way to synchronize your Telerik theme to a brand new Figma design, and that's using UI kits. Let's say you're using Telerik UI for Blazor. Really, any one of the component library varieties will work, but we're going to use Blazor as an example. And if you go to Styling and Themes, you'll find a Theme Builder section here, which has some useful information. And you also have UI design kits. And here you'll have Figma starting points for Telerik UI for Blazor components. It gives you an explanation why these are useful, how to get them, and covers some structure that designers will stick to. These mirror the structure of what's available in the Telerik UI for Blazor component library, making it much easier for designers to theme existing components. Now, if you go to this page, figma.com slash add progress, you'll find the UI kits that are available. You'll have kits for the fluent theme, material theme, bootstrap theme, and default theme. For example, let's click on this default theme. You'll see the compatibility here. It's available for React, Angular, Vue, jQuery, Blazor, and ASP.NET. We're going to be looking at Blazor shortly. And then you can click on Open in Figma. And this will give your designers a starting point to start theming. Here's your assets, and here's your icons. Your data visualizations are here as well. This shows you how to get started with the building blocks. This is more useful for those that are going to be going through the Figma project and modifying it. Here is the UI components page, and we're going to go through an entire example of applying one of these. I'm going to start with modifying the primary button, and let's increase that border radius to make it nice and round. Now, again, this is not going to be a perfect design here, far from it, but I just want to give you an example of taking this project all the way through from design to the running application. Now in Theme Builder, I'm going to create a new project and let's call this one RPS default because we're going to start with a default theme instead of the fluent theme this time. And let's click create. All right. So we have a brand new theme here and we've got some changes here in Figma. Let's make another change here for this primary button. I'm going to use a different color here. This is button primary BG and I'm going to modify that color right in here. I'm going to select this purple color instead. I know this is not pretty. Now it's time to export this. Let's go to plugins, progress theme builder, export styles, and let's select our RPS default project, export everything. Let's go over here to the cover page and under styles on the right, we have this color style primary. Let's uh, make a big change so that we can notice it immediately. And I'm going to change this color to this purple color. 
All right, now it's time to export the styles, RPS default, and you'll see that we have a color update. Let's export that. And I'm gonna refresh our theme and theme builder. You'll see that Figma primary is now updated to this purple color. Now currently all our components are using a primary color, but that's the Kendo primary color. So we need to map the Figma primary over to Kendo primary. There it is. And now all our components reflect the new primary purple. We didn't need to go and individually change all the components to match the new color. And yes, you could have changed the Kendo color primary right over here to purple, but now your Figma project and your Theme Builder project are in sync. So anytime that changes happen in Figma and the designer makes an update, they'll be able to push that update to the theme. So for example, here's that primary color again. We're gonna go even more obscene with our color selection. And let's go for something like this. Okay, it's not as bad as I promised. Let's go to plugins, theme builder, export styles. You know the drill by now. RPS default, and you'll see that we have one change. Let's export it. And once we refresh the page, I hope you can see the difference because now our button is red and we've inherited that Figma primary from the Figma project. We're gonna step away for a minute from Figma and from theme builder. And here's a sample Blazor project with Telerik UI already implemented. I'm running Visual Studio Code. You could do this in Visual Studio. I just happen to have VS Code with the C Sharp Dev Kit extension and it gives me Solution Explorer so I can build my solution and then right click on this project, which is the web project, click debug and then start new instance. This will pop open the application and here is my app you can see that I have some primary colors being used here. And there's quite a lot of Telerik UI components being used in this application. We're gonna be updating this with our new theme. To do that, go back to your theme that you've just created. And by the way, I did switch this to a purple color so we see a more stark contrast. And let's say you're completely happy with your theme now. All you have to do is just click on this export button at the top. This will download a zip archive which you can extract and inside you'll find a few things. There's a readme that's pretty helpful. RPS default is the name of your theme and a dist folder. Now you have SAS files here and these can be used if you have a build process, for example, but you also have a CSS file that you can use directly. And this is what I'm going to use here. So I'm gonna copy that file. And in my Blazor application, I'm gonna to go to the www root folder, the CSS folder. Let's open this up and paste in the new RPS default file. Now we need to find the place where we're setting up all our styles. And in the Blazor project that's in host.cshtml, you can see we already have a few style sheets linked here, including kendo theme default all.css. We can keep that in there for reference, but just comment it out. We don't want two versions of the CSS loading on one page. We're going to create a new entry here. We're gonna link a new style sheet and it's going to be the one that's local in the CSS folder called RPS default.css. Great. Now we're going to run our project one more time. Right click on the project, debug and start new instance. And here we go. Now our application has our new theme applied and you can see the primary color has been changed in all the components that use the primary color. So that's how we apply a theme builder theme to an application that's using Telerik UI or Kendo UI. This was a Blazor application, but if you're using another framework, you can refer to that Telerik documentation for the specifics on integrating the new CSS. In this chapter, we'll encapsulate the journey from concept of a theme in Theme Builder to its tangible application within a Blazor project. We'll go through the process of exporting your uniquely crafted theme into a theme package. We'll integrate this theme into a live Blazor application. And then we'll take a look at the before and after to see the stark contrast that your theme will bring to the application. By the end of the chapter, you'll not only have witnessed the power of a well-designed theme, but also mastered the skills to apply and customize it within your own projects. Remember when I said we're gonna do some exercises? Well, now it's your turn. You can still watch this chapter and gain some valuable knowledge here, but you can also follow along. And if you wanna do that, go to this repository. This is a sample project built in Blazor with Telerik UI implemented in it. In fact, I show how to do this in another course that's also available here. And this is the same project we used in the last chapter. Go ahead and clone this or download it, however you wanna get it to your local machine. 
Now you do have to have .NET installed on your machine, whether you're using Visual Studio or you're using Visual Studio Code with the .NET SDK installed, that's fine too. Next, create a brand new project based on the default theme. I'm gonna do this as well. And at one point I'm gonna ask you to go off on your own and try this yourself. I'm gonna call this one RPS Dark because it's gonna be a dark theme and I'll create it just like we have before. Here's a sample Figma project. You can get this as well, or you can create your own using one of the kits that I've described earlier. A link for this will be provided down below. Now, imagine that I've created this dark theme with all these nice styles. You already know how to export it using the Theme Builder plugin, Export Styles. I'm gonna leave it right here, and I want you to try and go through this entire process getting this design from Figma to the theme in Theme Builder, mapping the appropriate variables over, exporting the theme, and then getting it into this Blazor application. Hopefully you've tried the previous exercise. Now let's go through the entire project together. Here I am in Figma. I have this beautiful design here. I'm going to go to Plugins, Theme Builder, and Export Styles. I'm gonna log in, and I'm gonna select this RPS Dark project that I've just created. And yes, I do want to export typography, colors, and effects, everything. Let's click Export, and we're done. Back in Theme Builder, I'm gonna do a quick refresh here. Let's do a quick check to make sure my project does have the Figma exports, and yes, it does. Now I'm gonna go through this very quickly. In fact, I'm gonna speed up the video because there is a lot of mapping to do, and it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get everything mapped over, but I'm gonna show you where to start. So first, we're gonna start with colors. Here's Kendo Color Primary. You're already familiar with what the primary color does. You can see it as an example in this button. It's this orange, and it's hard-coded to this hex value right here. Well, instead of hard-coding it, what we're gonna do is map it to a Figma primary color. So I'm gonna start typing primary in the box and select Figma Primary. You already know how to do this from the last chapter. And as you can see, we have a change now. But now we're not only changing just the one button, we're gonna go through the entire set of colors, the Kendo body variables, and the Kendo components as well, and the buttons and the links and the data viz. We're gonna do it all. The next one is secondary, so I'm gonna start typing secondary, and there's Figma secondary right there. Kendo color info is next. Again, it's hard-coded. I'm gonna search for info, and I think at this point you kind of get the idea. Figma success, and so on. This way, whenever things change in the Figma project, when you re-export into this Theme Builder project, everything that's mapped over will automatically update. I've finished my colors, and as you can see, every single Kendo color is mapped to a Figma exported color. Next is the body. If I type body in here, you'll see that it's not exactly matched. So I'm gonna look for BG for background instead. Not all the names are gonna be a one-to-one -one mapping here, so in this case, it's Kendo Body BG is going to map to Figma Base BG. And this is a big change because now our background is dark, giving us that dark theme. And of course, on the dark theme, text will have to be a lighter color. So I'm going to search for text here. And this is going to be Figma Base Text. During your own mapping, you're going to have to experiment and find the best mapping that you can between the descriptive Kendo styles and its Figma equivalents. I'm going to go through this very quickly now and do the rest of these, including components, button, Kendo link, and then Kendo data viz. Now you can actually go into advanced edit and fix up anything that you see here that doesn't quite match your expectations. I do see a couple of things here. For example, this slider, range slider, the bar is not quite visible. So I'm going to go in there and uh, let's zoom in here. There's a the track. As you can see, it's not super visible, so I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna select Figma button BG for the color of that track. Same thing for the vertical one. Let's go back to live preview, and now you'll see that the track is quite visible. And you can fix up a few things here that don't quite match your expectations. For example, this uh, button right here, it's kind of hard to see the text there, so I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna select the button, and then the button text. Let's go to text property, and then I'm gonna select Figma button text here. I'm gonna go with something a little bit darker like this uh, 30 here. And if that's not dark enough for you, there is a 50, that looks better. There's a little icon here as well that we probably want to set to the same thing as the text color. I'm gonna select 50 for that one as well. And because I started with the top left, all the other component states inherit that. We also might wanna make these flat secondary ones a little bit lighter. So let's go to Figma button text here. And same thing for this icon. There we go. These buttons are looking great. Let's fix up the outline button. Notice I'm always selecting the Figma bound 
tokens here because that way, if anything changes, all these components will automatically inherit all the latest. Go with 50 for this one and 50 for this one. That's the hover state. As you can see, active and selected also need to be done. I will leave that as an exercise for you though, because I think you get the idea here. Now it's time to export this theme from Theme Builder to our Blazor project. I'm going to click on this export button and this downloads a zip file. The zip file has a readme, the RPS dark package folder, and a dist folder. This has a SAS folder, SCSS that is, and this will allow you to incorporate the styles that you've just created into a build process if you have one of those in place. I don't in this case, so I'm going to use the RPS dark CSS file directly. I'm going to copy this file just like we did in the last chapter. Here is my Blazor project. Go to the www root folder and let's open up the CSS folder in your file manager. Here I'm going to paste in my new RPS dark CSS file. And before I make any changes, let's just run this real quickly. I actually have Solution Explorer here, which comes with the C-Sharp Dev Kit extension, which I have enabled here. And this allows me to see things like I would in Visual Studio. Well, <laughs> almost. But it does give me Solution Explorer where I can right click on the project and go to debug and start a new instance. This is what my project looks like before we apply a new theme. Notice the default orange primary color here. And if we go to the backlog page, this is the Telerik UI for Blazor Grid component. Now, to get the new theme installed, I'm going to go to Pages, then open up host.cshtml. That's where we define our HTML head tag, along with the styles that are referenced in here. Notice we already have a Kendo theme default in here. Comment that line out, just like we did before. We don't want to load this twice. Your new theme will come after that. To make it easy on myself, I'm just going to copy this line because these are my application styles and I'm just going to paste another copy of it here. And since the new theme is hosted in the same CSS folder as my styles, this is just going to make things easier. All I got to do now is link to my RPS dark file. That's what we called our style sheet. .css is fine and we're ready to go. Now all I got to do is right click on the web server project, go to debug and start a new instance. And look at that. Now we have our dark theme that we've just created. See these primary colors? Yes, they're orange. I realize that, but it's a different orange. Now let's go to the grid. As you can see, the grid is also a dark theme. All the Telerik UI for Blazor components automatically get the new theme applied to it. But this application has other styles that would also need to be changed as well, of course, because there are parts of this application that don't have Telerik UI components, like the header, for example, or the left navigation. The background here is also custom application styles and not Telerik styles. That's why it's still a light theme. For this particular application, I can do one of two things. I can either create separate application styles for the new theme. In this case, I'm using my application site.css and I'm applying the same exact color to my body background as in my theme. But if you want to leverage theme builder styles, you can do that too. However, for my demonstration, I'm using Blazor and it doesn't have a SAS pre-built process. So I would need to use the CSS based theme in Theme Builder, like the one we started off with in this course, the Fluent theme. Here we have CSS variables. And let's say I go down to RPS colors. I can add a new color. Let's say RPS BG for background. And let's make this one really just way out there. Something that doesn't match just so that we can tell that it's working. I'm gonna have it this red color. And I'm going to go through the same exact process of exporting the project, grabbing my CSS file. Let's copy that. And back in my project, I'm going to paste it in here. So now I have the new rps.css file here in host.cshtml. Instead of rps dark, I'm going to just change that back to rps.css. So now I have variables available to me. And the one that I just created is called rps bg. Now there's one more important thing you need to note here. All the variables that are exported from Theme Builder have a TB prefix. So in order to use this, we need the whole name, including the TB prefix. Let's copy that name. Let's go to my application CSS file. And for the background color, I'm going to use a variable now, paste that name in. Let's run this and have a look. And there we go. Now we have that red color come through. And every time I rebuild a theme and export it, my site 
will also inherit the theme builder colors. So that's the entire process from start to finish. If you haven't tried it yet, go ahead and give it a try. Congratulations, you've completed this course. We've navigated through the ins and outs of Theme Builder, covering both the fundamentals and intricate features that will really raise your theming prowess as you craft your own applications. It's been a pleasure guiding you through this adventure, showing you the ropes of this powerful SaaS tool. I'm Alex Ziskind, and if you're looking to connect, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. For any Theme Builder inquiries, or if you're curious about UI theming strategies, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy the creative journey that lies ahead with Theme Builder, and may your applications shine with your new theming skills.